吃都不急。Welcome back to Two Nobodies, everyone. Rupesh is back here with you again. Thank you all for subscribing and listening to the podcast. Really appreciate the support. You know, I think we all experience this. It's such a primitive emotion, and that's shame. And we also experience guilt, which is these are just not great feelings to have. But you know, as humans, this is something we all experience, and it's something we also don't really talk about. In the past, I, you know, when I've talked about shame, not necessarily on this podcast, but with colleagues or friends, I always find it a very heavy topic. And I thought, you know what? There's we need to bring this onto the podcast. It's important. It's something that you know sometimes there's stigmas around this.、Uh, we shame ourselves for talking about shame sometimes. And so,、um, you know, I brought、uh, Lois Hollis, who reached out to me、uh, to to be on the podcast. And Lois, just welcome to Two Nobodies. Appreciate you making time for me today. And Looking forward to chatting with you about、uh, this important topic. Oh, thank you, and thank you for being smart enough to realize that it is important. Because years ago they said, "Oh, I can talk about a happiness coach, but not a shame guilt coach."、Uh, we don't talk about that because it, we don't have any, and if we don't talk about it, it doesn't exist. And I went, "I'm not changing my title because it's that、mm. important." And How do you defeat your enemy? You have to know your enemy. Sure. So that's so, what. So tell, tell, <laughs> tell people about. So you said shame guilt coach. I'm sure a lot of people have never heard of a shame guilt coach. So tell us about that. Okay. Well, in my quest for health, because I had an abusive childhood,、hmm. which left many many scars,、um, brain traumas, and jaw was broken.、Hmm. My、uh, chest was broken.、Um, I had scoliosis, so I was given a death sentence in fifty because of all my、uh, abusive traumas. However, I had a brilliant career in face of all the abuse. So it's amazing how wonderful we are as a human body. We can withstand、mm. so much, and that's why we don't feel like we've been injured.、Mm. We're so、um, re- adaptive, aren't we? Yeah, I mean, so absolutely. All we've been through. I mean, look at、yeah. the current events, and what are we doing? You're still talking, and I'm still talking.、Mm-hmm. So we are resilient. So that, but we don't realize the impact of our wounds, and that's why I bring out the shame guilt. Because without the shame guilt, we are stars. We're wonderful.、Mm. So, in my quest of healing. I found a wonderful chiropractor who had helped me heal my body, and therefore, you know, it took many years. But once I healed from the physical traumas, as you know, we need to heal from the emotional issues. Sure.、And、at that point, I was suicidal. I felt the world would be better off without me, and that's just like I can't believe that I felt that depressed. Because I started the first kidney hemodialysis unit in the United States in 1966. Wow! I gave lectures throughout the country at the Wharton School. I helped create home hemodialysis. I created society. I so for me to fall down into depression, feeling that the, I'm not good enough to live in this world, it's huge. Huge. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, but it doesn't make any logic, right?、Mm. And that's where shame guilt gets us because it's not logical.、Mm. So why would, did I, go, ahead. go ahead? No, no, you go ahead. Go ahead. Why did I come up with shame guilt? Shame makes more guilt, and guilt makes more shame. Do you know you have a coin and you have heads and tails,、mm-hmm. but it's still a nickel or it's still、right. a dime. So that's what shame guilt is. Shame's、mm. on one side, guilt's on the other, and、mm. when we know that, our brain comes together. Because some people say shame is bad and guilt is good. There's no guilt. There's no healthy poison. <laughs> guilt is very bad because it makes more shame, and、right. shame makes more guilt. Shame is in the unconscious mind. Hmm. And guilt is on the conscious mind, 
we have two nervous systems. One's unconscious, one's conscious. But it's right. still the nervous system. Mm. It's still the coin. Mm. So I don't separate shame and guilt because our brain separates it and it's not healthy. We need mm. to say shame guilt. So you like to tie the two together. So let, let's let's step back for a second. How do you define shame and how do you define guilt? Well, as everybody talks about, shame is I'm not good enough and guilt is I did something wrong. But so that, one that, is, one is that, I'm, so you said I'm not good enough and the other one is I did something wrong. So one seems to be like more within, like looking at yourself. And one is I did, so it's like almost like an action or a behavior exactly. or something like that. Yeah. But the reason they are that way is because one operates on the unconscious nervous system and the other okay. one works on the conscious, but it's still the nervous system. Hmm. And interesting, you'll never, ever, ever get rid of guilt until you release the shame that's causing it. Hmm. That's Never huge. get rid of the guilt until you release the shame that's causing it, okay? Now, that's huge because we have, um, I you know, talk with so many people who say, I'm not good enough because I can't get rid of the guilt. I did four courses. I did meditation for 10 years. I, um, you know, I read this. I did this. And I still have the guilt. So I hmm. must be really, really bad. And I want hmm. that to to know that they are correct they will never get rid of guilt until you get rid of the shame that's causing the guilt sure that's really important and if that's one takeaway that that's a good one for today that yeah. you have to release the shame because the shame is part of the guilt the guilt is part of the shame you can't separate mm. It's like when you make a cake and you have flour and eggs right. and, you go, and you eat the cake and you go, well, I don't taste the eggs. I don't taste the vanilla. Well, yeah. it's all homogeneous. Yeah, yeah. Now, why do the psychologist or our medical field do it that way? I'm a nurse. Why do they mix the two, you mean? Yes. Why, why they okay. do not. Why they do okay. not. Okay. Now... I'm in the nursing field forever, so mm. I kind of understand a little bit about how the medical society works. If you have a virus in your brain, they call it meningitis. Mm. If you have the same virus in your heart, they call it carditis. If you have the same virus in your stomach, they call it gastritis. Mm. If you have the same virus in your kidneys, they call it nephritis. Mm-hmm. But you receive the same antibiotic for all those conditions. <laughs> okay? But you say, right. oh, I got carditis. Oh, I got nephritis. I got bursitis. I got meningitis. But you get the same um, antibiotic because it's the same mm. bacteria. So that's why medical science has separated them because one's in the unconscious mind and one's in the conscious mind but it's the same energy hmm. you know what I, I mean i think that's uh you see that in medicine uh western medicine in general right like trying to separate systems right and looking at things in isolation rather than seeing as seeing as the body as one whole system and how one contributes to the other right it, i think I, I mean i understand probably why that happens but i mean it's just not natural that's not how the body works right you're a genius <laughs> thank you <laughs> that you put it together and that's what i'm yeah. helping that's why people have been in oh no i don't have shame i have guilt i have guilt it it, it, mm. it it's just a mind um focus that keeps us away from taking get rid of it yeah so contemplating oh i have shame no i have guilt so you spend mm. all day trying to figure out what you have and you're actually going goofy that's mm -hmm. not a term, but um yeah you yeah understand what i'm saying you're not getting yeah. anywhere so right i help people bring them together shame guilt is one nickel it's one nine it's still you mm. use it and think of it as 
old coin. Shane Gill. It's just uh, it's just Shane. Yeah. Gill. You can't separate them. You no, and, and you know when it. when you when you're talking about not separating them, like when I first when I first heard you say that, I was like, huh. But my understanding is that they're two different things. But that's not what you're saying. What you're saying is is yes, shame is about you know this focus on myself, and guilt is you know about you know the action or the behavior that comes out of it. But what you're saying is when, when by putting them, the reason why they're together is because one feeds the other, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And. Yeah need to know they're not going to get rid of guilt ever until you get rid yeah. of the shame that's causing it so that mm. takes such a relief off of people people guilt themselves intensely because they can't get rid of it they get mm -hmm. forgiveness and they accept and they forgive but if you if you don't attack get rid of the shame that's causing the guilt you'll keep attacking yourself sure and we got to stop this because you were saying guilt. how you were saying how, um, uh, you know, shame is kind of like the unconscious mind, right? And we know that the unconscious part of our brain or the autonomic nervous system is running all the time. It's the thing that probably drives most of our actions, right? Um, that's something that's hard to change, right? And, and so like when I see that analogy of like shame is like the unconscious part of our, our brain, right? It's like it takes a lot of of uh it, it see I, I would think so anyways if you're trying to correct like the unconscious part of our brain like that takes some conscious effort right it takes no yes but no it takes conscious effort but um i talk to the emotions and we can talk to our mind that way like when you feel depressed hmm. say hi depression how are you and right. i that's why I went to film school to film how we have individual parts of ourselves so we can consciously talk to our unconscious. Mm. And the inner critic that we all have, we can, um, they, you know, what is an example of your inner critic would say you didn't do that right or you should have done that or is that typical when, you know. For sure, yeah. So my response to that is, who's talking? Hmm. Who's talking? Like, if you're in a, a, a group of people and someone says something bizarre, they go, who's talking? You want to find out who's talking. That's how you investigate your unconscious mind. It's easy when you know the so, process, and that's what I teach. Okay. So, so where do you start with, so, so, so on, on that, like when someone, like, how do you work with people as a shame guilt coach? Like, what does that look like? Well, it looks different for everybody because everybody sees it yeah. differently. And hmm. who's talking? You know, I'm giving advice right now. Say hmm. who's talking and then you'll telepathically feel more so what you need to do is make your unconscious conscious but it's not hard you just have to talk mm. to your unconscious mind like i'm talking to you hi mm. it's talking just bring awareness to it exactly mm. and that's really um it's it works a hundred percent i've been doing that for like 15 years and it works every time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now you may not get an answer right away, but continually, you know, find out who's the who's the elephant in the room, <laughs> or come forward. And when you invite that into you, then your unconscious talks, and that's the inner critic is the one that makes the shame. Mm. So, if you have a problem with one of your um, uh machines that you have purchased you want mm -hmm. to go to the company and find out what's you know how can you help me with this effective machine and the secretary usually can't help you out you go to what the ceo it's a lot mm -hmm. better to go to the president to find out what problem you have right and that's what you're doing to yourself you're going to the ceo of your personality and the inner critic is the one that's in charge. You usually think you're in charge. No, you're not. Your inner critic's in charge. So, hey, I want to meet the CEO that's in charge. Mm. We've got some talking to do. <laughs> and that inner critic is like, 
you know, it's uh, sometimes it, it's like the inner critics probably always saying like, hey, I'm, I'm helping you here. You know, like they're the ones who are trying to keep you in check as much as like they're the ones who are hard on you. Right. Well, your inner critic is your best friend, but he got the wrong information. Nah. He was he came in when you were two and three years old and he still yeah. thinks two and three. But nobody told him it's the year 2023. <laughs> so yeah. you said, what is your name? Well, when I, uh, King, King is the name of my inner critic. And I said, King, can you come into my life now at 2023? Because now I'm mm. an adult and we can work this out. No, no, you're too stupid. Well, give me a test and they test you. And that's very, it, you know, it's not a mental thing. It's a hard thing. Mm. And I have my my film out as discord into harmony teaches you how to talk to your inner critic mm. so you know i have available things for people to see how we get talk to ourselves but we yeah. talk to ourselves we talk to the individual part of ourselves okay who's talking we got some talking to do and what do you do yeah. if you and i didn't get along We'd have to say, well, what kind of ice cream do you like? I like this strawberry. I like the opera music. What music do you like? We have to find out our differences. And then we make friends. And now my inner, my kid, he said that he didn't want to be the protector of the shame guild anymore. It's a very mm-hmm. boring. I said, would you like more power and a vacation? And he said, sure, more power. And now he goes around trying to find me beautiful people to have a podcast on. He doesn't do the shame thing because we worked that out. And he says, you're an adult now and you've done all this work. You understand. And now I will support you in your work instead of watching everything you do. Right. So the, he, he got a... Um, more power and when the inner critic gets more power I can get more power Hmm. so neither one of us are happy until we make a concession we talk to each other we can't kill the inner critic we don't want to keep saying no because he's there to help us but Mm -hmm. he was living in my inner critic was King was living in 1950 and it's a 2023. You have to invite them into your timeline. Mm. That's what there is. It's very not complex. But so whenever, like when people try to raise awareness about shame, like it can be a heavy, heavy topic. And I mean, I think that like you're kind of getting to some of your, the, the traumas that you experienced um, uh, earlier on in life. Like it's, it's hard to, to, to really... Okay. Because name you, and talk to your shame, right? It's not your shame. It's okay. Not shame. Sh- okay, I need to digress. Love sure. energy. We all know love energy. Mm. And what does love give us? Warmth. We have joy. We have happiness. Comfort. Confidence. Yeah. Comfort. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we have abilities we didn't know and we don't. We're, we're fearless. Mm. We're compassionate. So love gives us what? Many, many feelings. Mm. Then on the other side, we have shame, guilt, energy. It's not an emotion. It's an energy that affects our emotions. And that's why we don't have to fear it because it's an outside energy. Remember the uh, Wizard of Oz? Yeah. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but yeah, go on. <laughs> Everybody remembers Dorothy. Yeah. With her red shoes. Yeah. Going up the yellow brick road. Mm. Mm. In fear of the wizard. But the wizard mm-hmm. is the only person that can help her. Mm. So she goes up and she's breathless and she gets to the wizard's empire. And what does her doggy do? Toto. He pulls the curtain back. Hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And what do we see? 
when he pulls the curtain back. A little old man, bald and gray, with a big silver machine. Right. Turning a crank. And it's a puff of green smoke. Hmm. Shame guilt's a puff of green smoke. Hmm. Education. I'm educating people. Shame guilt is a negative energy. It changes our emotions from positive to a negative. I do not own shame guilt. I can feel depressed. I can feel sad. I can feel unworthy. But I don't own shame guilt. Shame guilt is something we need to dismiss. Shame guilt is purposely put upon humanity to make us smaller, make us victims. Shame guilt has no good qualities. Even though religion says guilt is marvelous guilt, that's the lowest energy that we can survive in. It's the worst thing to do. We can't be in guilt. The lowest. You said form, you said religions religions um, says, kind says of... we we need guilt. No, we don't because oh. I'm moral. Okay. I yeah. don't do it because it's the wrong thing to do. Mm. I don't do it because I feel guilty. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I don't need guilt. No. Churches need guilt. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not debunking all religions. I'm just saying yeah, 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 yeah. guilt is not good. I was raised Catholic and I just couldn't find my sins. And I thought I was really even worse than ever because I couldn't find my sins. And God said, if you don't, they said, if you don't see your, if you don't tell your sins, God will never forgive you. And I go, hmm. I'm, a, I'm a six year old in first grade. What sins am I doing? And I, I remember crying and crying because I couldn't mm. find my sins and God God wouldn't love me. I was raised. Yeah, I could, I, could, I could see how, yeah, that now that when you say it that way, I could see how, um, I could see how, I'm sure this happens across all faiths where uh, yeah. um, they leverage guilt to kind of um, get folks to, to, to commit or, or, or whatever the agenda might be, but I could see how oh, guilt could be used. Today. If you don't do this, you don't do that. Right. You know, guilt, guilt, guilt. Guilt is so universal. Yeah. No wonder we're stuck. And I'm telling people, guilt doesn't belong to us. We mm. can feel regret. We can be angry, but we mm. can't feel not good enough because that's not the way we were supposed to be. Humanity mm. can function so much higher. Now, I I go to the thrift stores and I found the book, How to Be a Jewish Mother. Okay. <laughs> Written in 66. I'm Polish, so it, I'm not debunking the Jewish people. Yeah, no, I'm, I written. don't think you're going that way, so. <laughs> okay. So there is a chapter called Making Guilt Work. Okay. Written, see? Okay. Written. I'm making, making guilt work. work. Okay. Yeah. Underlining all techniques of Jewish motherhood is the ability to plan cultivate and harvest guilt control guilt and you control the child <laughs> okay it's written there so yeah, you yeah. why you're carrying guilt that's that's okay. why I, yeah that's so interesting that it's in that book wow so it's there in black and white yeah it's not a figment of your imagination you were mm. taught to you to be guilt ridden so that right. you can be controlled control guilt and you control the child control guilt in your culture and people do what they want you to do they want you to buy something they want you to live a certain way they want you to dress a certain way because they control the guilt such a manipulative energy eh? it's an energy now yeah. people say, it's, what do you mean? It's a, what happens to your computer when you get a computer virus? You kind of lose control of everything, right? Things right. shut down. Yeah. And what do you do? You get a virus removal program. Mm. Mm. Do you see the virus coming into your computer? No. 
No, but you see what it does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's shame, guilt, energy. It comes through the words. Oh, you stupid jerk. Why would you do that dumb thing? No wonder you're not mm-hmm. a success. Your mother doesn't mm-hmm. even love you. It comes through the energy, through the words. And what have I said? In the beginning, I was very complimentary to you because you um, went through all the stages of recording. Did we have the sound right? Did we, which is wonderful. Mm. And I applaud that. And you smile. You're happy. You got love energy. I was giving you mm. love energy. Yeah, you did, for sure. The old energy, I'm no good. <laughs> So that's what I'm doing in my work. I help people realize that shame guilt is nothing but a green puff of smoke. That is used to control you. Hmm. It's not my shame guilt. It's not my energy. It's the shame guilt. Now, I have the depression shame guilt, and yeah. I have anxiety, but I don't have, I don't own shame guilt. It's not mine to own. Hmm. Give it away. So that takes away the fear that people have when they can't talk about being depressed or anxious or shameful. We don't talk to shame. We can't heal shame. We can only kick it out. We can. We have to be a toto. Yeah. So be a toto. Um, <laughs> when... How do you think that society these days or or culture is sort of having an effect on shame guilt? Like, do you think it's it's they uh, use we're it. they use it? So you Constantly. think we're using it? We think you think we're using it like it's getting worse and we're using it more? Yes. Or do you think okay? Yeah, yeah. but people are starting hmm. to wake up because it's so obvious. If you don't get this medicine, if you don't get that vaccine, if you don't do that, if you don't do that, you're killing people. And, you know, the guilt, never, ever make a decision on guilt because your mind is in confusion. Mm -hmm. It turns all your positive emotions to negative ones. Compassion turns to depression. Mm. Intuition turns to anxiety. And we have to know the tactics that shame guilt uses, that people right. use. You have to buy this particular brand of milk because it's the best for you. And if you don't, you're, you're, you're helping, your children will not grow up strong. <laughs> control guilt and control the child. I mean, it tells mm. you right there. Yeah, yeah. What role do you think empathy plays in in all of this? Pardon? Like empathy for yourself or empathy for others? No, or, I think um, it's a first step. It's good. And to forgive yourself and have empathy for yourself, it's good. But it doesn't get rid of the shame, guilt. You mm. actually have to find it. And I tell, help people to find it in their childhood or whenever someone said to them. And you can actually remove it from your body. You have mm. to. Like virus removal program, mm-hmm. you can't tell your now computer. It's okay. We love you. <laughs> that doesn't get rid of the virus, does right. it? Right. I've tried that. You <laughs> have to get a virus removal program, and right. that's why I have a shame guilt removal program. And and our and our uh, psychologists or counselors, I mean, people are probably seeking more of these folks. Do they have? Um, I mean, this is a really blanket uh, question, I guess, but, um, but do they, do you feel like they have the tools necessary or do they approach things the right way to kind of remove shame, guilt? No. Okay. Interesting. Because Tell me more not, about that. Okay. And I, I don't teach therapists. I teach people yeah. to self heal. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not saying don't go to a therapist, you know, some, you know, some are really good, but if you want to get rid of the shame, guilt. Now, this is manual of man of mental disorders. Okay. That's what current psychologists, psychologists use. Okay. It, it, mm, 915 pages. And that's how many illnesses we have. 
Hmm. Okay. Not one word is mentioned about shame, guilt. Do they and mention it individually or do they just... They don't mention it. Oh, okay. Shame, guilt causes all negative emotions. Love causes all positive emotions. Hmm. And that's very simplistic, but that's just the way it is. Shame, guilt is an energy that affects our emotions. You don't heal shame, guilt. It's not mine to own. It's a big puff of green smoke used yeah. to control me. Hmm. I'm debunking the whole story. <laughs> you're definitely, you're definitely, uh, it's a definitely a, um, a take that I haven't necessarily, or, or a different way of thinking about it that I haven't, uh, I haven't heard, which is very interesting. I wonder, I wonder if you're okay with this. Like, I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling us a little bit more about your, your story and your, your traumas and then sort of how you like, again, got rid of that energy, like that process. Would you mind sort of getting into that a little bit more? Oh, uh, no problem at all. Um, I'm going to be 80 in a few months, so I could talk for a few hours, but <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm going to short it for you. I was a um, very abused child, and I didn't really realize the extent of it until my 50s because I have such a inner spirit that's so strong. Mm. And hmm. I think you understand that people can weather a lot of storms that other people kind of just fall down. And hmm. so I have always been very stoic. And I didn't realize all the um, traumas until in my 50s that I was given a death sentence because um, I had 30 years of migraine headaches. Hmm. 30 years. But that wow. was all brain traumas. I could not go outside in the day because of the brain traumas. I could only go out at night. Thank goodness stores were open in the evening. But that shows you the extent of my traumas. Yeah. And people who have brain traumas know that light, they're very sensitive to light. Hmm. Um my kidneys weren't functioning properly because I took medication for my migraines. Um, I had a hard time eating because my jaw was broken. Uh, I had severe scoliosis. I was crippled. My lungs couldn't expand. And um, I had a genetic defect in my heart. I had a leaky mitral valve. So I wasn't pumping blood enough and um, I was extremely dyslexic and I couldn't read as a child. And so there was a lot of shame about that because I was called the idiot child hmm. because I couldn't read or write. But that was because of all the brain traumas. So um, on a scale of zero to 10, it was pretty much a zero. Um, but um, my neck was broken, and C one, two, and three were broken. Obviously, oh I, my did, I didn't live. I, can't, you know, God sent me back, and so I've always had that ex experience of being in other dimensions, and that's why I was able to be a forerunner, or they call a trailblazer, in my nursing career, because I always knew things before other people did. Mm. And that's why I started the first creamy hemodialysis unit, because I, I'm a trailblazer. And when I what was your role in that, Lois? Just starting the first uh, hemodialysis unit? Um, help create the process of dialysis. Wow! How people could um, 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 use hemodialysis as cleaning the body, but we had to teach people how to do it at home because people needed to do it three times a week. Yeah. And so I taught people how to use the kidney dialysis and how it worked. And I had to train nurses and doctors how to do it as well. Mm. And, and um, 
my best job was a consultant. I love that one. I would visit all the kidney units and give my two cents and get paid for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love that job. <laughs> but anyway, so um, I helped create the um, American Nurses and Technicians, Nephrology Nurses and Technicians in 74. And um, it's incredible it's involved today. So, I mean, I was very, really smart and really did a lot of things. And I was with open heart surgery in the beginning at University of Maryland. And so for me to take up Shane Gill, because nobody else was doing it. And I said, well, it's in everything. So if nobody's doing it, I have to do it. Mm. That's just my MO. I'm a trailblazer. Mm. And luckily, I found the uh, doctor to help me through my um, severe injuries. And um, at now, my grandson taught me how to rollerblade. So I rollerblade. That's amazing. So from dying to rollerblade. <laughs> so what I'm telling to you is that anything's possible, but you've got to do the emotional work. And once I discovered Shane Gilt is the culprit of everything, I had to go public. And I had people come to me and say, how did you heal? I've mm. been in therapy for 10 years and you were sicker than me and now you're okay. And I said, can we do what you're doing? And I said, I don't know, I guess so. I'm just talking to myself. So mm. I helped them like I did with you, the king part and the emotional mm -hmm. part. And they got well, and I got rid of the shame guilt and taught them how to do that. And within a month or two, they're fine. And then they sent all their family and kids and people to me, and they also got well quickly too. So I said, mm. I guess that's what I do. I help yeah. people get rid of the shame guilt that's not ours to own. And that started it. And I wasn't really popular because nobody talked about it, as you mm. mentioned before. Yeah. Yeah. They go, oh, we don't talk about that. We don't talk. But the mm. pandemic came and everybody is shameful and guilty and homebound. And, you know, so in about two years, I've talked to 17 countries and 200 podcasts <laughs> now. <laughs> because it needs to happen. And I'm so grateful Absolutely. for that. Yeah. Just to change the awareness of what you receive today, you look at it differently, don't you? Absolutely. How did you? How did you even um, like in naming shame guilt and just that first? Like you talked about looking at the inner critic. Like how did you even like? How did you know that? Okay, this is where I got to focus my attention on, and this is what I got to. This is what I got to do in order to to get rid of this. Like how did you? Wh where? How did that start? I guess. Well, um, I attended a lecture in Sedona, yeah. maybe tw mm, 20 something years ago. And um, the mm. person was doing um, inner family systems where they talk to a, the, the happy part of you and the depressed part and all that. And all of a sudden my mind goes click, 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 click. And all of a sudden I'm talking to myself like that. And, and then, um, I realized that the inner parts of us, my depression, who is um, Alice, and my anger is no name, and um, my critic name is King. So they all gave me their names. And I'm, as I'm talking to people about this, they go, Lois, I don't see what you're doing. I don't understand. Then I realized that the near-death experience I had in childhood gave me the ability to see more dimensionally than normal. So mm. that's why I went to film school when I was 64 to show people what I see and how they can help themselves. So that's yeah. why my films are out there to show people how to talk with your unconscious mind. Say, hi, mm. how are you? What is your name? Who's talking? And that's where I found the shame guilt was hidden inside of these parts of us. Because when you're five years old and you're shamed and a teenager, when you're shamed, you have carrying that all through your life. Mm. And, and I found the person that's carrying it and I released it and I healed. My gray hair got less <laughs> because it's, 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 you're healing at the core. Yeah. And everything you know? else just kind of responds, right? 
Right, and your therapy does not, some therapies address the inner child, but it's, they don't address shame, guilt. I'm a forerunner. Mm. And five years from now, they go, oh yeah, I know about that stuff. Today, people, I, I'm on podcasts to help educate people, and they're getting incredible results. Because shame, guilt doesn't belong to us. Yeah. That's, it just doesn't. That, I think that that and it's when you say it that way, um, it's still something that I have to really think about when you say it's it it it's not us, it doesn't own us kind of thing or um like it's this kind of external energy, so to speak. Like I think that to me is a is a new it's way a of thinking shift. about it. It's a it is a brain shift. shift. For sure okay, it's a brain now, shift. Yeah. To help you with that and everyone else, shame guilt energy needs you. You don't need it. Mm, we're the ones who feed it. Your energy mm. that you have as a human is called light energy. Mm. You know, we have energy. The shame, guilt energy needs that positive energy to live. Mm. So that's why they come into you and mm. draws. It's like a leech. I mean, some of my friends call it a leech. Sounds a leech. like it. It is a leech. It, yeah. It's an um, I have many names. It's a leech. It's a monster. It's an alien invader. It's a vampire. Uh, these are the people who, like you. You'll come up with your own name and you'll say, Lois, yeah. I got another name for it. Yeah. Um, the alien invader, the vampire, the evil wizard that messes with my mind. Hmm. I mean, this is what they've given me. So I'll put you on the list when you give me another name. But you can call it anything you want. Yeah. But it's a leech. And it needs you. Mm. It needs you. You do not need it. You mm. do not need um, these leeches. You saw people have leeches on them. And they mm -hmm. suck the blood. That's what shame guilt is. Mm. So when you feel the shame guilt, that you will feel to say it's a leech okay shame guilt energy only has one problem okay it dissolves in detection it dissolves in det okay i see what you're saying yeah when the jig is up you know magician how a magician yeah. does yeah yeah then you go back at the magician book and say ah oh, yeah. yeah. did it yeah. he had me believe in that there was magic but he just did slip of the mm. hand or pulled mm. a rabbit out of his coat or whatever they do mm. and that's what i'm saying here today the jig is up mm. we understand you're nothing it's you're an energy that makes us feel bad i can talk to depression i can help my anger but i don't do the shame guilt they don't work there's nothing good about it it's a leech that yeah and I'm a magician, and I can make you go to green smoke. How has uh, how has shame guilt impacted your relationships in the past? And like, I guess now that you've you've detected it and you're dissolving it, so to speak, and you or dissolved it, so to speak, how has it now impacted your relationship? The fact well, that it's kind of gone. Just a quick one. Sure. Yeah. I had a, um, a very bad experience from a neighbor. Okay. Okay. And I was assaulted, hit. And um, this was a person that had political influence. So they were trying to say that it didn't happen. And, um, mm. you know, I was against Oz. You know how the crooked mm. world is today. Mm. And um, I've never really been in court before. So I didn't really understand how it all works. But there was, um, I had a video of it happening. Okay. So would think that that was enough evidence to yeah. see someone hitting you. Yeah. He did it. And so this person had a lot of political influence and he had a very shady lawyer. And the lawyer was trying to tell me that it didn't really happen. And the guy said, I hit myself and um, all this other stuff. And <laughs> I, but, but you know how, you know how the legal system is. And as they're talking to me, I'm going, oh, my goodness, they're only using shame guilt against me. 
I enticed mm. him to hit me and I did all this stuff. And, and I go, and I have a rock solid case. They only are using shame and guilt so they can get me down and say it's my fault. Mm. Right? That's what yeah. lawyers look, yeah. look. I mean, look at people that are in the right and justice and they, their case is dismissed because they use shame, guilt on the witness. So once I said, that's all he's got is shame and guilt. And then I said to the lawyer, I don't take that. you are got to say it a better way. I wouldn't take the shame, guilt he's throwing at me. Guess what? I won. Hmm. First victory ever when this person and I won. So I that's said to awesome. myself, even if no one gets it, what I'm teaching, I won. Because I didn't accept the shame guilt from the lawyer. So when if you would have, if you would have accepted that shame guilt, it would have brought you down. You probably like maybe you would have had some doubt. Is that what you're thinking? As far yeah, as like your yeah. own case or? Yeah, of course. Hmm. What does shame guilt do to you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, if shame guilt is only one thing that someone's using against you, you know that you're in the right. Yeah. They only got one weapon. Shame guilt. Hmm. And they use it. But if you're smart and you know that shame guilt's a puff of green smoke that's used to control you, you don't take it. How empowering is that? Yeah. Yeah. Very empowering for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my claim to fame, I won in court because I knew the lawyer was shaming me. Hmm. But I would not know otherwise, correct? 100%. Yep. Yep. What, when, when, are, are there, are there any, um, like researchers out there or people who are talking about, and again, I don't know if they're talking about shame and guilt or shame, guilt, as, as you put it together, but are there any folks out there that maybe people are aware of or a little bit more, um, are kind of more mainstream that you maybe think got it right or understand it the same way that you do or anyone you follow or? I, I, I didn't get this information from anybody. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It was God given because of my experiences with other dimensions. Mm. And I just... I'm I'm a creator. I'm a trailblazer, and mm. it's true. I mean, out of a hundred yeah. cases, a thousand cases, all of them get it. But when they get the information, so that's I got a big job. I got to live a long life. Big job for sure. Yeah. Big job. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, and it took no. I couldn't be shameful because nobody else was doing it. Mm. Okay. That was another test for me. Mm. How can I be right? Oh, I don't know. How can I be yeah. right? You know, as, but I know the truth and it works. It works every time. And then I see people, I'm not going to mention names, but I see mm. people doing very courageous, wonderful things in the world today. Okay, we got mm. a lot of negativity. But you know what? They don't take on the shame guilt from their people. Hmm. And they're very strong, very honest. And so take mm. a look at someone you admire that's able to speak their truth without shaming and guilting. Mm. You admire people you admire. I admire people that stand up for truth and they don't get shamed because they understand that shame guilt is a control mechanism. They may I'm, not go ahead. No, I was they, just saying, I will absolutely, uh, I, I, that's a really interesting way or thing to, for me to observe going forward is, um, yeah, our, our people admire who I admire and, uh, and whether they're taking that on or not. And you're probably right. They probably aren't. They aren't because yeah. they unconsciously know that's wrong hmm. or they were trained that way or their parents were very empowering, but they're not narcissistic. They mm. just don't take the shame gant on that someone throws at them. They go, no, I don't take it. 
and they're very powerful people. Yeah. I'm not saying all powerful people don't use shame guilt. I'm talking about the ones that do for good because the negative side of our world, they do shame and guilt all the time to get you to be their victim. And the people that empower you do not use shame guilt. Hmm. It's a good thing to observe and maybe for our listeners as well. Because don't you have the mother or the grandmother or the uncle that you just so admire because they can just go through life and they don't get down and they just speak their truth? Absolutely. The reason they can do that is they don't take the shame guilt on. But we never knew that. That's what I'm doing here today Mm. is telling you why some people are truthful and successful and other people are suicidal. It's the shame, guilt, energy that takes you down because it leeches your power. This sounds, uh, and I hate to say this after this whole wonderful conversation, but like, even though you saying this, like, um, that they're not taking on the shame, guilt, if I am taking on the shame, guilt, I'm like, oh, but these people who I admire are not taking on the shame, guilt. I'm going to shame, guilt myself for, for taking on that shame, guilt. Well, you can do that if you want, but that's stupid. Just take, <laughs> I, just take the shame and guilt and throw it away. Yeah, Say, yeah, I'm smart. Yeah, okay, yeah. I was so depressed. I was so guilt-ridden. I yeah. actually had to make a tape of me saying, I'm good. Mm. I did this good. I had to compliment myself if I wore the right clothes. I did good in dressing. My shoes mm. matched my dress. Or I make spaghetti very good. Or I, I always make a. I always have a problem making uh, pancakes. I do them very wrongly. I compliment myself if I did something right or something wrong. I'm mm. so good at making that wrong. I do it wrong every time. Mm. I had to train myself out of the out of the guilt because I was so yeah. ridden, and I had to compliment myself. And I put it on a five, 10 minute, and then I didn't, you know, or another, this is way before we had cell phones. You know, this is a, uh, a cassette tape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if anybody even knows what a cassette tape is nowadays. But I made that a half an hour and I would hear or earphones and I was going around my day. I would always hear these, I'm good messages. Mm. That's how bad I was. I was in the hole of shame. Yeah, now. yeah. And well, well, why wouldn't I be yeah. if I was called an idiot child? Yeah. Experienced all that trauma for sure. It, the self-compassion piece eh, is, is the way you're talking about when I hear that, like it's, it's, uh, it sounds like it's so important. Well, it is, but it's not going to heal you. Mm. It's a good start. Like it's, it's a good start. Like yeah. now, baseball, you'll go to first base, but it'll never bring you home. You actually have to find the shame guilt and mm. take it out and Mm. refuse to take any more. So that's what I'm all about education. And I have an e-book called 500 Questions, One Answer. And it shows you 500 ways you shame yourself or other people shame you. And it's all educate. You have to know your enemy. And who is your enemy? Shame you. Mm. That's it. I mean, it sounds simplistic, but isn't the truth usually simple? It is, and we probably layer a bunch of crap on top of it, right, to make it more complex than it needs to be. Yeah, nine hundred pages. Yeah, okay. and that's the old edition. Yeah. So I'm sure there's more. That's sad, yeah. isn't it? So yeah, yeah. But it is. we can heal ourselves. Hmm. We can heal ourselves, but no one else can heal us. That's the whole point. We have to heal ourselves. And this is how we do it. We kick shame guilt out. It doesn't belong to me. And if, you know, be a toto, you know, whatever Mm. you can use. People tend to like that one, but feel free to use any terms you want. What's the reaction you get when you, after you work with, with folks and, and they're able to, to remove that shame guilt? That it's the most rewarding thing ever in life. Hmm. People are so happy 
and they go, my goodness, it's so easy, but it's so hard because we were taught to shame ourselves. Mm. And once it's interesting because people turn like that. They've been in therapy for 10 years and they turn within one or two sessions because the truth, truth is powerful. Yeah. Truth is powerful. It's amazing. I, I, I marvel at it all the time. It's truth is powerful. Cuts through a whole bunch of stuff, eh? Rhetoric. Someone told yes. me that that's what they yes. do. It's called rhetoric. And I go, what is rhetoric? They go, that's what they try to do to you so you don't get the truth. I go, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so it cuts through rhetoric. Yeah. And I am forever, ever, ever grateful that I don't cry as much as I used to because I was mm. emotionally injured, but then didn't know. I didn't know why I was always injured. And the, res the resilience of your story, Lois, is, is unbelievable. Um, yeah, I, I might not be internally, like when you were telling me about your story, there's certain a lot of emotions I'm feeling. I might not be showing them entirely, but um, yeah, it's just incredible what, what you're telling me about your story and uh, just what you, what you worked on and how you discovered, uh, and identified shame, guilt and, and got rid of it. And then you're like, I gotta, I got this job now. I gotta tell, like, you, I gotta you know, do it. I got a big <laughs> job and I you know, like, that's cool. That's so and amazing. And life begins at 80. I mean, you know, I got a life job. Life begins at 80. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I won in court against all odds. That's awesome. Isn't it? Amazing. 100%. It's amazing because I just said, no, I don't detect that. <laughs> yeah, the, I'm not, take, I'm not like, taking your shame guilt. Yeah. Right. So I went, no, can you talk? Can you say that another way? I'm, I'm grilling the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully you had that on video. Hey, <laughs> um, no, I don't, but it's in yeah, my heart. Yeah. And I'm so, yeah. you know, I said to myself, nobody gets it in the world, but I get it. Hmm. I'm happy. I my yeah. life has changed, and I'm willing to help anybody with their this information to change. I'm sharing information, and I give it out freely because we need to be very empowered humans, especially now. Control guilt, you control the child. Hmm. Okay, that's what they say. That's a, it's a beautiful, this is a beautiful, this has been a beautiful conversation, uh, Lois. And, um, I think that's a really great place for, um, for us to transition to the questions that I ask every guest. Cause I think, uh, this has been such a complete and, and wonderful, uh, conversation. Somebody, one of my guests told me they're like, um, there's a, there's an opportunity of a lifetime that shows up every week. Right. And, and, and usually I record these episodes, um, you know, weekly, I typically have a weekly guest and, and I always find so much, but I like to today, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you at the end of the episode, one thing that, um, just about your work, uh, that you did with the, the hemodialysis, uh, piece, I'll tell you something at the end of the episode, but, um, to me, this has been absolutely an opportunity of a lifetime to, to get to hear this story and to learn more. And, and on a, on a personal front, like shame, uh, well, I've, I've been learning more about shame and guilt. And so to kind of have this like slight paradigm shift to thinking about it together and, and, um, and thinking about it as an energy and, and just identifying and removing it and, and the, the simplicity and the way you spoke about it, like it was just wonderful. Well, thank you because truth is simple. Hmm. Lies are complicated. Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. 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 Um, are you okay if we shift to the yeah, two questions I ask every guest? So the, the first the first question is our five for dinner question, dead or alive, who are five people you'd want to have supper with? Oh, that's, um, is it friends or mentors or what do Whoever you, you want. There's no boundaries no. on the... Yeah, because I, um, I tend to um, have intuition as my mentor you know i just mm. what's for me because how can you be a trailblazer if you have to follow other people you you have sure. to follow yourself mm. that's what i i've helped people have helped me along the line but i follow mm. my own song 
so to speak. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know. Um, my mother has passed and my daughter has passed. And I guess that's what mm. I would like to have with me. Um, um, and some political figures that are good, I like. Um, but um, my spirit is my guiding light. And um, that's that's who I can only say. Um, I, I don't have a mentor. Yeah. Um, uh, the only I I say I follow the footsteps of Jesus, because mm. he had it right. Not <laughs> 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 following his footsteps, but anyway. Yeah. Um, so you have you said you said your your mother, your your late daughter, and um, yeah. Are, are there any political officials you wouldn't mind? Would you mention? I would uh, Trump. Um, I think. Oh, yeah. He, I would say I'd like for him to come to dinner. Mm. <laughs> But that's about uh, it. Okay. Um, last question. Besides the circle of life, who? Um, what do you know for sure? What do I know for sure? Yeah. That um, I have the blessings of spirit within me, and I am always guided and loved and supported without a doubt. Hmm. And I know that to be true. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm just talking about the inviting spirit that we all have hmm. is um, very uh, fresh and very active within my life. Hmm. I, I write for spirit too. Spirit talks and I write up about a thousand pages of spirit yeah. readings hmm. that help people get out of shame guilt because it raises yeah. their frequency. And yeah. they're also available. Now, Spirit and I talk. <laughs> <laughs> Lois, this has been a pleasure to, to get to know you and to have this conversation. Um, the thing I wanted to tell you was that um, uh, my dad, who who's no longer uh, no longer with uh, with us, but um, he uh, he had he lost his kidneys in uh, 1995, and for about nine years or so, he had to do home uh, dialysis and I remember that process and I remember him having to wake up in the middle of the night to change the bags and and to do all these things and um, but you know without that like he would have had to go to the hospital three times a week and so it was a very conscious choice for him to want to do home uh, hemodialysis and uh, or or when yeah home dialysis and um, oh, yeah and so I just uh, to, to, to know that I'm talking to the person yeah, who, who people how to do that that's amazing. It's such an amazing, and that's why I say this is an opportunity of a lifetime for me, right? Um, is that uh, to to have that connection? Like it's just so bizarre that that that's happening right now. So uh, I feel very blessed to have had this conversation with you. And uh, last week I had um, a podcast with uh, a person whose husband is a um, kidney transplant doctor at mm-hmm. the Mayo Clinic. And I told him, I told, I asked her, he, she could say hi to him and tell him that I kept a lot of people alive for him. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all coming around circle. And yeah, thank you yeah. for your story, because it really, um, I worked 24 hours, seven days a week mm. with, I did, because I'd work at the hospital and in the evening I'd help people at home with dialysis. So I was mm. very, very busy. For yeah, twelve years. Well, I thank you. I mean, if it wasn't for that work, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know where my if I would have had the the same amount of years with my dad as I did. And uh, so, so thank you. Uh, all that appreciation goes to you and and the number of lives that you've touched. Um, whether just in that work alone is in, is incredible. And now, just for you to feel like at the age of eighty that you this like life is I starting and you have the big shit. Another gear. You got, yeah, because, yeah. You know, why not? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your, your spirit is absolutely infectious, Lois. So, so thank you for making time for me today. And I appreciate the conversation. And um, we're going to put all your information in our show notes so people can reach you. And um, yeah, I look forward to connecting in the future. Blessing. Yeah. 
Thank you so much, Lois. Take care of yourself. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And uh, and uh, hopefully you share this episode and tune in to next time. Take care. Bye.